Hi everyone, welcome to another video from Pyramid Studio. This is our first video in 2025. In the last video, we covered some uh, techniques for enhancing the LLM capabilities that included uh, prompt engineering, uh, LLM fine tuning, as well as uh, rack. So in this video, we are going to implement a rack system from scratch. So let's get to it. So today we will start with a brief recap of RAG, then we will see vector databases, uh, what they do, and uh, see a few popular vector databases. Next we will see uh, some of the main uh, embedding models that we can use for building a RAG system, and finally we will go over an implementation of a RAG system. So this implementation uh, will help in understanding different components, what each component does, and uh, how they are uh, working together in a rack system. As we mentioned in the previous video, LLMs have acquired a parametric knowledge during their training. This parametric knowledge is good for general use cases, but uh, there are certain limitations to that. LLMs have a knowledge cutoff date and they cannot answer questions about uh, recent events beyond their cutoff. And also they are not suitable for domain specific applications uh, with uh, proprietary information that are not publicly available. And finally, updating LLMs with new knowledge is not easy. To overcome these limitations, we can use uh, RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Essentially, RAG is a technique that, uh, given a query from user, it finds the most relevant information from a database and then feed that information to the LLM. Then, the LLM will answer the user's question based on that information. Vector databases are specialized databases that are designed for efficiently storing and searching through high-dimensional data. They essentially implement uh, the approximate uh, nearest neighbor algorithms, which uh, is a class of algorithms for approximating k nearest neighbors. Vector databases have applications in search and recommendation systems, and they are an essential component of a RAG system. Some popular vector databases are included in this slide, including uh, Pinecone, VV8, uh, Milves, uh, Fies, or Facebook AI Similarity Search, and Chroma. Some of these provide uh, cloud-only support, whereas the other ones uh, provide both cloud and local deployment. In this video, we will use Milves, uh, as it is uh, open source and uh, very easy to install and use locally. Another important component of a RAG system is the embedding model. The embedding model will generate high-dimensional vectors that capture semantic meanings of their input text. Some popular choices are Sentence Transformer, BAAI General Embedding or BGE, as well as the models from OpenAI. You can see that the dimensionality of these embedding vectors generated from these models ranges from 384 to 3072. So these vectors will be stored in the vector databases that we mentioned previously for fast search. For this implementation, we are going to use the sentence transformer as our embedding model, and then we store the text data along with their high dimensional vectors in a Milves database. And for generating the final response in natural language, we use the OpenAI GPT-4 model. So let's see the implementation step by step. For this implementation, we want to build a RAG system for a paper titled WizRAG, Vision-Based Retrieval Augmented Generation on Multimodality Documents. You can download the paper from archive with the link in the description of this video. Then we use PyPDF2 to read the PDF file in Python page by page using this uh, PDF reader. And then we concatenate the text together to make a long string. After that, we do some cleaning, because the lines in the PDF are ended with slash n, so we remove the unnecessary new lines. Next, I have defined this function called uh, split text uh, to split the text into chunks with a given chunk size and overlap as input arguments. This function will return a list of text chunks. Uh, for this example, I used a chunk size of 2000, and uh, overlap of 500 characters. 
Now we are ready to generate the embeddings for each chunk. For this example, we use the sentence transformer using this model named all mini LM L6 V2. Then we call a model that encode on each chunk and get an embedding vector for them. The next step is to store the chunks and their associated embeddings for lookup. As we said earlier, we use the Milves vector database for this part. So we import a Milves client and create a database locally. Then we create a collection with name Vizrak paper. If a collection with this name already exists in our database, we can drop it and recreate the collection. After that, we can insert the chunks and their embeddings into the collection. So first, we uh, reformat our data such that we will have a list of dictionaries. Each dictionary contains an ID, which is a unique identifier for the chunk, the embedding vector given as a Python list, and finally, the actual text of the chunk. Then we insert the data into our collection. Now we can test the vector search functionality. Let's give an example query that is, in Vizrak paper or in Vizrak retrieval, how the final embedding is generated. We use the same embedding model and generate the embedding vector for this query. Then we can find the most similar chunks to this query. This is done by uh, comparing this embedding vector uh, with the embeddings of chunks that are stored in the database. This will retrieve two chunks that are most similar to this query. Now we need to set up the OpenAI client. I have already created an OpenAI API from my account and have stored the OpenAI API key in a .n file located in the same directory of this uh, notebook. So by importing the .n package, I can load the OpenAI API key as an environment variable and then set up the OpenAI client as shown here. Now we can generate a response using OpenAI GPT-40 model. Our prompt contains this message, answer the question about the Vizrak paper uh, followed by the query. For testing purposes, first uh, let's not include the retrieved chunks and uh, see what response the GPT model gives us. So when we call the OpenAI uh, client chat completion API with this message, we get uh, this response. However, this response is um, completely unrelated to the paper. And in fact, it is generated based on the parametric knowledge of GPT. Now, we call GPT-40 again with the same message and also include the retrieved chunks by appending them to the end of the message. Then our prompt to GPT is asking to answer the question based on the retrieved information, not using the, uh, its own uh, parametric knowledge. And now we can see the correct response. So this response uh, is more relevant and we can see the relevant uh, paragraph from the paper that describes the process of calculating the embeddings. Thanks everyone for watching. I hope this video was useful for understanding how RAG works. In the next video, we'll cover fine tuning. So we'll describe uh, different algorithms for fine tuning LLMs and also we'll see how to use them. So until next video.